everyone. This video will demonstrate how to pour stone models using rubber impression molds. We'll be using dense stone and we will use the manufacturer's recommended water to powder ratios. As we start out, it's best practice to use these measurements. I know many assistants and doctors and hygienists just eyeball their measurements. They'll pour out an amount of stone and add enough water to get to the right consistency. But until we know what that consistency is, let's use the manufacturer's recommendations. For PPE, even though we don't have a risk of infection control issues here, no blood or saliva, we still have hazardous materials. We need to wear a mask to protect ourselves from inhaling the gypsum powder as well as gloves to protect your hands from the drying effect of the stone. Looking at our water to powder ratios and using dense stone, we need 30 milliliters of water for every 100 grams of powder. To fill up these rubber molds, I need 150 grams of powder for each mold. Pour up your impressions separately. Don't try to mix a huge batch of stone and trying to pour up two full models with one batch is not a good idea because the stone will probably set up too quickly, especially if we're new to this technique. So 150 grams of powder, that means I need one and a half times the liquid. So I'll need 45 milliliters of water. So let's measure out our items. When measuring your liquid, use a graduated cylinder and be as precise as possible. Here we have the 45 milliliters of water measured out and you want the bottom part of the meniscus to be at that measuring line. Pour this into your mixing bowl. Next, we will measure out the powder. Turn on your scale if it's off and put your bowl on top of the scale. The scale will record the weight of the bowl, so we need to zero this out or tear the scale, T-A-R-E. Hit zero again to have your scale go back to zero because I need 150 grams of powder I don't care how much the bowl weighs, I just want to weigh the powder. Take your scoop, let's go into the dental stone container, scoop out, and always keep this closed. Keep it tightly closed. Get your powder into the bowl. Need a little bit more. Try not to spill on the outside here because if you'd spill on the scale itself, it will record that weight even though it's not in your bowl. We need 150. So again, it doesn't have to be precise. It can be plus or minus a couple of grams. It won't be a, a huge deal. So we'll call that good, 149. Now I can add the powder to my water and start my mixing. To mix your materials, always add powder into the liquid. This will help incorporate it more uniformly and prevent pockets of powder from being created. Stir it up to incorporate all of the powder into the liquid. And that just helps prevent excess powder from popping up into the air. Give it a vigorous stir. And then we'll use our plaster vibrator to get the air bubbles out of the mix. So spend about 30 seconds mixing this and then use your plaster vibrator to get the bubbles out. So I like to tap it up and down on the plaster vibrator. It helps bring the air bubbles to the surface. So I'm using some pressure 
pushing the bowl against the plaster vibrator to shake those bubbles to the surface. Don't spend too much time doing this, probably no more than another 30 seconds. This is all a chemical reaction. If I take too long mixing and getting the bubbles to come up, the stone will set too soon for me. Take one of your molds. Here we have, here we have a maxillary mold. Here we have a mandibular. It doesn't matter which one you start with. Place the mold or impression on your plaster vibrator. Take a little bit of stone at a time. Just a tiny little bit. Start in one corner and let the stone flow into the indentations. Keep adding small amounts of stone into that same location. adding to the same spot. Watch the stone as it flows through the deepest parts of the teeth. Tilt your impression or your mold to get it to flow. Keep adding small increments to that one side. Do not add stone in the other side because once the two sides meet, you'll trap air and you'll get a big bubble or a void in your final model. So continue to vibrate your material. Keep adding, and I'm adding a little bit more than I should at one time, but watch it as it flows into the impression. And again, I'm pushing fairly firmly onto the vibrator to get the stone to flow. If you lift up, the stone stops flowing. So use that vibration to help your mixture flow. Now with these rubber molds, I never get the greatest results. I always get better results with real impression material, alginate or VPS. But this is good practice. So you can get your timing down, so you get the right timing. If you take too long to make this, it'll start to set. It'll get crumbly and it won't flow like you see it flow now. Once the tooth anatomy has been covered with stone or filled with stone, I can add larger amounts of stone. I'll still add in the same location, but I can add larger amounts. The detailed anatomy of the teeth is most critical and most affected with bubbles. So once those teeth are filled in, just take your excess stone and fill it to the periphery, fill it to the top border. Touch it to the vibrator to level it out, and then smooth the surface. You can touch it back onto your vibrator just to smooth it out. So this is similar to a box and pour method. If you have an impression and you choose to use some boxing wax to create a border around the impression to contain the stone. So you're effectively pouring up the anatomic portion, the teeth and tissue, and the base portion at the same time. This will take about 45 minutes to set up. So I'll set this off to the side and I'll make a new mix for the other arch. Before I make a new mix, I will clean out the bowls. Make sure you're always mixing with a clean bowl and a clean spatula. 
don't let this excess stone go down the drain. This stone will harden in the water pipes. So put any excess stone in the trash and then the little bit that's left in the bowl can then be washed out. Make sure you're using a sink that has plaster traps when you do this. That will catch any sediment in the trap and keep it out of your wastewater pipes. So I'm ready to pour the Max Larry model. And there I have both of my impressions poured up. Once enough time has passed, I will take them out of the molds and we can see how they look. Remember to take your extra stone and throw it away. Remember, don't let it go down the water drain. Regular trash and then rinse it out in a sink with a plaster trap. We are back with our stone models that we poured up in these rubber impressions. So these are just stock rubber impressions used for us to practice our pouring technique. To get your model out of these, they're very flexible. Just flex the edges and push up from the bottom. And just work your way around to get it out. Now I will say in my experience, I always have a harder time pouring these up. I usually get at least a couple of bubbles in the teeth, but I don't get those bubbles on other materials like alginate and VPS. So here we've taken out the mandibular model. When you look closely at it, you wanna look for any bubbles. I see a little bubble there. Now the anatomic portion is what is most critical. You don't wanna see bubbles on the anatomic. Bubbles on the base, not a big deal. That won't affect anything that we make for our patient. Few bubbles up here. So again, not a huge problem for a study model or even if you're making a whitening tray, those are passable. We could always put some block out resin in there. But again, you won't see these bubbles on an alginate with the same pouring technique. It's just usually due to the material of this rubber. So again, to separate, flex the edges. and then push up from the bottom. Taking a look at this one, bubble up there. 
Again, bubbles on the base, but the base does not matter as much as the teeth. So this one looks pretty good. Another bubble back here. So these are pretty good study models. A few bubbles on each one, but not enough to affect anything that I might make for this patient. With your study models, always write the patient's name and the date of the impression on the study model. That way, in an office with many of these lying around, you know who they belong to. So again, these are just generic rubber molds used to practice our technique. So if you're a student pouring this up, put your name on here so your models don't get confused with another student. And here we have a set of stone study models. Thank you for watching. I hope it's been helpful.